Hi, my name is Sean Olson. This is lesson two on using 3ds Max to build source game levels and other assets for the source game engine. In the first lesson we learned about setting up the basic configuration of Max for the source game engine. If you're familiar with that, you don't need to go back. If you haven't seen that and aren't familiar, I suggest watching that. In this lesson, we're going to block out a very simple map. It's not going to be anything complex or overly artistic, but I'm just going to do this to show you how you can quickly set up your map and some tips on using some Max utilities to optimize the whole process. One thing we can do is block out our map. And again, remember, always have snaps toggle on and snap to grid. You can use other toggles, but when you're doing the basic blocking, I would suggest just using the snap to grid. So this is just your standard blocked map where we have a little playground here to do and we're going to build a very simple small FY map for the game Counter-Strike source. The first tip that I want to give you is to wire the parameters of various things that are always going to have same similar attributes. For example, these outer walls are all going to be the same height at all times. One of the things you can do in Max is wire parameters. That means one parameter of one object will always control the parameters of another object. We're going to right click this wall, choose wire parameters. And if it's not appearing in the Camtasia recording, I apologize. Sometimes it doesn't. But we choose wire parameters. And we're going to choose the height of this wall and we're going to wire it to this object and we're also going to choose height and we're going to see that in the left it shows the parameters of the box 6 and parameters of box 5 well I'm gonna give them two-way connections that means that changing one will change the other and just choose connect and we can do the same thing with others We're going to right click this object, wire parameters, go to its height, and choose that object's height. Two way connection, connect. We're going to do the same thing with this wire parameters, height, object box, height. Two way, connect. So you will see now if I change the height of any of these boxes I'm going to change just this box height all of them matched so that's one quick way of getting your objects to always control each other and you don't have to go and tweak them at all at all times all of them all at once you can make some objects control other objects so that's one way to optimize the time that it takes to do everything. Another important thing when you're working with your level is to use layers. And you can get to your layer manager by clicking tools and go to Ma manage layers. And it will bring up a window like this. There's always one default layer. What I would suggest that you do is to create layers that represent the different types of objects in your scene. So one thing we can do is click all of these objects that we want to put in a layer and then click the create new layer and it moves all of the selected objects into that scene by default. And we're going to rename this layer and call it layout. So if we want to hide layout we can hide it anytime we want. If we don't want to have to worry about um, changing it we can freeze it. And another thing you might want to do is uh, add another layer for any type of geometry that you want to do or different types of objects that are specific 
and you want to work on them and hide other things. So using the layer manager is important. A lot of times I'll make a one for layout, another layer for hint brushes. and another layer for things like entities etc cetera, etc cetera. so we're gonna go back to our layout and select that as our default one here and we're gonna add a couple blocks in here just to break the map up a little bit So now we have a basic little layout for a very simple FY map. Now we want to put a sky on top of here. We want to add a, a sky to the top to seal the map in. So I'm going to show you another snap. We're going to take off the grid snap and choose vertic vertice snaps. And we're just going to create a box that's now snapped to the top here. So now one of the things you'll notice is we are starting to fill up our layout layer with a bunch of objects. And you'll notice also that they're all named box one through whatever. That actually can get confusing after a while, which brings up the next tip. You should, as much as possible, give all of your objects names that are easily identifiable. For example, this box, instead of being box sky, or box 001, we should name it Sky. Now if you have several chunks, you want to give them numbers. But now in our list here, if we want to choose Sky, we can easily get to it by just looking at it. Let's go to the ground one. We want to change this one to ground. And now that one is easily referenced right here and this one we might want to call it wall wall outer east and we might want to call this one wall outer south etc etc so I've went ahead and renamed a couple of these now quickly to show you how convenient it is to rename them I can quickly say let's hide the sky and now the sky is hidden and if we don't want the walls to be bothered we don't want to accidentally click those we can freeze them in which case and we can even do that to the ground in which case I can't even select them they're frozen so it's helpful in uh, not accidentally moving things around in fact you can freeze an entire layer so if I actually wanted to put these in their own layer I could freeze that layer and not worry about individually freezing them so I'm going to unfreeze these and show you another benefit of the wire parameters I'm going to bring back the sky now remember we wired the height of all of these outer walls together so changing one changes all of them but you'll see if I do that the sky doesn't always match okay so what we can do is wire a parameter again and this time we're doing transform we're going to transform this positions Z that where is where it's at in the Z axis to this objects height and we're going to make this a two-way connection and connect so now when I go back and change this objects height you'll see that the sky goes with it so this way we don't have to worry about moving all of those things every time we want to move one thing. It just optimizes the whole process.